1999, there was no frame of reference for what a tragedy like this even was. I remember when uh, the teacher came into the library yelling for everybody to get under the tables, that somebody had a gun, uh, we stood up because there was no way that could be possible. Having been involved in this tragedy has caused basically 20 years of, of my mental health journey. I have PTSD and social anxiety disorder. My addiction started with the prescriptions uh, that I was prescribed for my physical pain. And what started as prescriptions very quickly turned to alcohol, marijuana, illicit narcotics, you name it. Um, and that spanned throughout the course of my 20s. I was gonna do whatever I could to not have to feel present. So there was no collaboration between mental health and, and physical health. My journey has been one of dealing with anger and then coming to a place of forgiveness and turning anger into determination. The biggest thing after losing friends and my sister that it taught me was the value of human life. It was the loss of a best friend and not only that, it was witnessing the murder of a best friend. Why did I make it out? Why did things happen the way that they did? What could we have done differently? Those things plagued me for a long, long time. I shielded myself from the gunshots and so I felt guilt for trying to survive. It affects me still two decades later because there are things that are happening in the world today still that create triggers. It's either gun control or mental health. And the fact is both sides play a huge part in this and many, many other things. That causes a, a little bit of anxiety, thinking about my daughter going to high school. In the back of my mind, there's always that feeling that what if this were to happen to her or my son? What if this were, you know, what, what would I do? My daughter is 11 months old. Thinking about my daughter's first day of school is about the most terrifying moment I can think of since it happened. I think it's really important that not only survivors of trauma, but survivors of addiction speak out and, and they share their stories because you never know when your story is going to change the life of somebody else. The Rebels Project was established 13 years after our shooting. It's a beautiful thing when you get to meet an, another survivor and just to connect. It's powerful. It is so powerful and it helps me, after 20 years, heal. We wanted to get together and let people know that they would have help in some ways. My hope is that when we look back and remember Columbine, we can remember the students and the teacher who were lost, just like any tragedy, as opposed to um, highlighting the perpetrators or recognizing the perpetrators. If you want to do something to honor those that were killed at Columbine 20 years ago, take the time to value somebody in your life. Take the time to say something or do something that shows value to someone else. And if you do that, that will honor uh, my sister, my friends, and the other victims that were killed at Columbine.